let's load it back in. Just grab it from our render folder here. Uh, oh, and don't want to merge it. Put down the merge by default. We don't want to do that, of course. So I just plug it in there. Let's just play. And it's pretty cool. I mean, of course, quality is also going to depend on like quality of the renders that you did and all of that kind of good stuff. But uh, that is pretty cool. And I mean, I'll, I'll leave it like there's there's stuff you could tweak here. Uh, something that I would probably maybe still tweak is which I'm not going to do for now. It's like probably uh, I'd like the specular here to be a little bit more intense uh, when the electricity is up. So that's something you could, for example, do is by going into your specular. Like if I have my, or let me, that's in the, for example, the reflection here. So what I would probably do is, let's say I could really increase the, could gain up the, Reflection. So if I were to then switch this back to one and then check that out, you could see then I could really increase the uh, sort of the way that it, yeah, it looks. So uh, but yeah, you could render this out again. I'm just, I'm gonna leave this like this for now. Uh, I'll leave this in the, I'll leave the brighter one in the comp. Uh, but just so you know that I'll leave it up to you to sort of make it your make it your own, right? Right. So a couple of things that I probably want to do. Um, so here, maybe what's cool is do some chromatic aberration. Uh, so if you don't know what chromatic aberration is, it's gonna be chromatic aberration. So it's essentially stuff you try to avoid when you're filming. Um, but it's the light sort of sort of uh, it goes through a lens and then it sort of breaks out a little bit so it's not perfectly uh, it's not perfect so you get stuff like this um, yeah you can see it here in, a, in an actual picture happening and yeah, but generally it just looks cool if you do it in CG so it's pretty simple let's just put a transform down let's view the transform Let's go to settings and let's only do it on the red channel. And let's offset it by just a little bit. So let's do five, zero, zero, one, for example. Oh, by the way, if we just move it, you can see what's actually gonna do. So you can see we offset like a color channel. So if we do five, zero, five, uh, it's too much, so five, zero, one. And let's say the other side, so let's, uh, so maybe this one should be four, nine, nine, something like that. Except for line five. So you can see now we have a slight bit of chromatic aberration there, which is pretty cool. And that's going to be our red chromatic aberration, I guess. And do another one. So another transform. Let's do that one on blue. And let's put it on just so just the blue channel. And we could just move it down just a tad. So we have a little bit of chromatic aberration. Doesn't need to be too much. Uh, what also might be nice to, to do is, I don't necessarily always do this on the entire image. What might also be nice, let me just, by the way, make it a little bit more extreme. Might also be nice is to only do it like on the highlighted areas. I'm not sure if that's accurate with how lenses do it, but uh, I like to have it more extreme on highlighted areas sometimes. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is make a, a color corrector. I'm gonna plug in color correct here. I'm gonna take out the saturation. So we just left with the values here. And I'm just gonna really Pump up the contrast, pump up the gain. I'm gonna add a blur. Let's 
put it to Gaussian. And we could do is we could uh, put this in the mask and there also in the mask. And then on those things, let's go to luminance and luminance. So now it's only going to do the chromatic aberration in the in the in the bright areas, like you can see here. So it kind of depends what you want to do. Uh, we can also do some lens distortion. Like, does it necessarily need to be uh, super perfect? Don't necessarily use this too much. So let's just do camera settings. I guess let's, uh, let's just pick something. Not necessarily. I mean, more, like, this would make more sense if you're actually just like trying to physically match a camera. Let's just do a Canon or whatever. All uh, right, so you can see we can add some, like you can add distortion. Let's just do like a little bit, just like tiny bits so sort of the the edges very slightly distort. It might look cool. Let's do a little bit of color correction. Like you could gain it up. Like you could change like the color a little bit like add a little bit of red there uh, maybe that's uh, a little bit too extreme I don't know I'm just playing around you can do the same we could add a vignette so we could do brightness contrast and then we could say Let's do it with the brightness. Let's do the brightness down. Let's make a mask. So let's press the mask button here. Boop. Let's do it. Uh, let's, let's do put a soft edge and put it to invert. So you see now we have also have a sort of a slight lens vignette going on. So I mean, you can make all of that stuff pretty easily yourself. It doesn't necessarily like maybe there's already a vignette. Now you see there's no vignette thing, but you can easily make that stuff yourself. Uh, so that's a little bit different than something like After Effects, for example. Um, so yeah, and then I guess you could add some additional stuff like. Okay, maybe I want like a little bit of a of a glow, but maybe only like here in the center or something. Like you could you could do that. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think it's already pretty fine. All right, so let's say we're happy with this result. Uh, maybe want to add some film grain. By the way, film grain. This looks cool. Rip a little bit of film grain. Uh, this is a very low strength. I don't like it to be too much. So we have some film grain and we have something that looks super cinematic. All right now let's say we want to export this to to disk. Uh, it kind of depends what program you're gonna put it into. If you're gonna go like if this is your final result, you can bake this uh, then you need to bake out these colors. Because uh, right now we're re uh, checking this in uh, in ACES color space, and of course, if you turn off ACES color space, you can see the colors are going to be all whack. Uh, so if you're going to work this with this in another program that's also going to be working in ACES color space, then you can keep it just a linear EXR like we did here, just render it out in EXR. I'm going to now show you how to get this out of Fusion, and like let's say if we want to put it uh, as an Let's say we want to just now convert it to an MPV overline, like put it in Premiere, uh, add some uh, audio on it. Like Premiere doesn't uh, properly support open color IO. Or like, let's say you're just making an image sequence here and we want to uh, make that into an MP4 or whatever. So what you would do then is to go to open color, I, uh, uh, open color IO color space. I think I always get, the, get these wrong. All right, so yeah, that's the one. 
Uh, so now we need to grab our, so let's just copy the path from here. So let me just turn off my open color IO here and just plug this in here so you can kind of see what it's going to do. So let's press our, grab our config. Let's go again from ACCG to output rec 709. And you can see this is going to look the same uh, as before, but now this is not in ACES and this is in ACES, but it's just baked down to this color thing. All right, now I'm going to make a saver and let's um, name it something like uh, aggregation tutorial. And let's uh, send out, so you could you could pick anything from here. Uh, I had some weird bug with PNG, I tried PNG before. For some reason there was a very weird bug with the colors. I'm not sure what's up. Uh, if you write it to just uh, Targa or JPEG, it's fine. Let's just do a Targa. Um, so let's just save it out. And so it's just gonna go to comp aggregation. So let's also say maybe V001, will this be the first render? Let me just render a couple of frames for this. So maybe like uh, 15 frames. So we can just have a look at it. Right, so this is now rendered out. So if I were to grab this, make a loader, You can see I have this thing. Uh, and again, depending on the application that you're gonna go in afterwards, uh, you could also just use EXR. I just know that like Premiere, uh, I just, I don't really like working with EXR sequences in Premiere. I just, for some, like for some reason, it just doesn't seem to like it. I generally just bake something down to, uh, to, some, to a format that's not a float format, for example, PNG or Targa. Um, so yeah, so, and th this will just be regular color. So this will not be ACES anymore. So I can demo that by just opening one of them in Photoshop and you can see the colors here look fine. So you could load this, load this in into, uh, something like Premiere or another program. Uh, you can see if you view this through ACES, the colors look very weird because it's no longer ACES. Uh, it's no longer linear either. Um, but yeah, you could take this then into uh, your editing package of choice or your audio package of choice, like just uh, to do some audio. Like I, uh, I generally like adding some sound effects under my uh, under the stuff that I do. Um, so yeah, uh, you can just render the entire sequence. I guess I can uh, could render this now out just as a uh, full sequence while I talk. But um, yeah, that's basically just the uh, yeah the entire process. Uh, uh, FX rendering, comp, uh, all that uh, all that jazz. All right, so that's a wrap. So we went all the way from the beginning, just learning the theory to making this super awesome final shot. So I really hope that you learned a lot uh, during these couple of hours. Um, and if you make any super cool end result and you're gonna post it on social media, make sure to tag me. I always love seeing what everybody comes up with. So if you want to watch more of my stuff, uh, you can check out timvanhelsdingen.com where I have dozens of hours of, uh, of tutorials. Also a lot of free tutorials, which you can also watch, for example, on YouTube, on youtube.com slash timvanhelsdingen. There's a whole host of free tutorials as well. And I also do other types of videos there. So um, if you want to follow, follow me there, uh, you can go right ahead. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you in a future video. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and until next time. Peace.